20 some, 27, I think, years ago, uh, when I was celebrating my first year of priesthood, I was treated for the first time to a Christmas play by the kids. I never was in a Christmas play. I went to public schools. But these kids put on a skit, and what I remember most distinctly in regard to the whole skit, no matter how cute or adorable was, well, was one incident that just made everybody laugh and, you know, everybody, you know, had a sense of joy and happiness. For when that song, which we processed into the <clears throat> church with, We Three Kings, one of the children began the song. And as they're saying, they said, we three kings of Oreo art. <laughs> I don't know exactly sure what Oreo art is, but uh, it's just unbelievable how they nevertheless were so into, you know, showing everyone the story about Christmas and the nativity. They exemplified what it is to give back to others. The whole understanding of the epiphany is the recognition by the Magi as to the gift of Jesus himself. They respond. They open their treasures. And the treasures they bestow, the gold, which symbolizes Jesus' nobility and kingship, the frankincense, which acknowledges his priesthood, and the myrrh, that acknowledges his willingness to die for others, because myrrh was used in funeral celebrations. The question remains for us when we think about what's going on, and every time I hear the myself so talk about, think about the epiphany. I think about that light head that used to be in cartoon, that light bulb that go on in cartoons when somebody has an idea or an epiphany. Um, I think about what it is that I'm supposed to do in regard to revealing Christ for others. How do I reveal Christ in my acknowledgement of him being, you know, the king of all the nations? Do I, do we, acknowledge Christ? Where do we give our treasures, our time, our talent? Do we understand how important it is when we offer our prayers for others? Each time we're willing to die to self so that others might have life. Each time we take the time to manifest our understanding of our gift and show the rest of the world what it means to be Christ-like, we are able to have that sense of joy and happiness. In scriptures, you know, it said that Jesus enjoyed, not that he didn't suffer, but he relished the opportunity of making other people important and significant, letting them know that they are made in God's image and likeness and are a source of blessing. They acknowledge, that is, our scripture writers, that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Do we appreciate who we are and what we can do to contribute to acknowledge Christ in our lives? Are we really echoing forth to others the importance of Christ? 
He came to give us the greatest gift there is, himself. And he gives it to himself, he gives of himself each and every time we celebrate the Eucharist. Each and every time we celebrate the Eucharist and are willing to follow his example, to bring about joy, God's presence in the Eucharist. Each and every time do we understand and appreciate and take joy in knowing that we make a difference. Because we can make a difference. And I tell you, those kids in that Christmas play 27 years ago knew they were making a difference. And it wasn't just because they were cute. They knew it had an impact upon everyone else. We need to echo forth our willingness to reveal Christ, to make him known to all the nations of the world, so all will come and adore him. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, everyone. Same with all of you at home. <laughs>